Hello everyone and welcome to Fish in the Podcast where I'm trying hard to suck less at merfolk and you're learning from my mistakes. My name is Cody, I'm one of the co-hosts of this show and my friend Matt is the other co-host. Matt, how are you doing? I'm not doing too poorly. Last week we had ice, right now it's 70 degrees out. Life is good. That is so weird. Yeah, we've been joking about it because here in Oklahoma, it was a it we it, it warmed up into the 50s. But again, that wind brought it down into the 40s. And so it was almost like nothing changed. Just very cold. <laughs> so we've got so, a we've got a, fish today. What's that? Are we going to talk about some fish today? We're going to talk about some fish. We're going to talk about fish in commander. But of course, before we go into our EDH discussion, we're going to look over the the commanders that are merfolk and kind of discuss them briefly. Uh, we're going to talk about the random merfolk card. Ooh. Do so we have, we have a hot card tonight? So you're actually going to be proud of me. I, I asked a passerby to give me a number between 1 and 208. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. Who was the passerby? Just some random person on the street. You just stopped and asked him to pick a number. Yeah, no, he was a he was one of the drug reps at my clinic. I literally said, "Hey, hey, this you give me a number between one and two hundred and eight." And he said, "One hundred and sixty nine." And I said, "Why did you pick that number?" And he said, "That's how much I owe my bookie this week." And, <laughs> and so so I took it, and he was like, it's "Dirk Diggler didn't score the touchdown." I, I, yeah, Dirk Diggler, <laughs> my boy, my dog, playing for the Your favorite athlete, playing for the Miami Bowlers. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the fish that we have this week is Marrow Grime Blotter. He's three in the hybrid Demir for a Merfolk Wizard at, at Uncommon. He's a 2 2, and he has one in a Demir, untap. Target creature gets minus two, minus O oh until end of turn. Sorry, minus zero. Yeah. Um, so first of all, there's there's no secret um, to anybody who's listened to this podcast before. I am an absolutely huge fan of the lore one block, uh, and Shadow Moore is technically part of it. It was a four set block, and the untap mechanic is just awesome. Now this card. Not so much. It's it's not the best card in the world. But the untapped mechanic is just really cool. You get so much value from it. You get to attack. You get to make it a body. And then afterwards, you still can do something on EOT. Your Plus, opponent's EOT. Yeah, yeah. So, so you wait until your, your opponents uh, declare attack step. And then you untap this thing and you have a blocker. And, and there's equipment that you can do that's kind of similar to this where, uh, you know, you untap it to block and then you also have abilities. So uh, actually an equipment that's used often in Legacy Fish is, and I'm gonna, probably going to slaughter this, it's Manriki Guzari. It actually has a hyphen in the middle. It's an equipment that costs two and has an equip cost of one. It's a artifact equipment from Kamigawa Block. And it has equip creature gets plus one plus two and has tap destroy target equipment, and which is really cool because you 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 tap you tap your create your merfolk to destroy target equipment, then you can pay the one in the t- the the hybrid the demir one, hybrid the demir hybrid to untap it, and then if there's another equipment on the board, you can tap it again to destroy it, then untap them again, and all the while you're getting the ability from the untap. Plus, in, in the case of Manriki Guzari, it it gives it plus one, plus two. So you have, you know, he's a 2-2, two, two, and that makes him a, you know, 3-4, which is a sizable blocker. So yeah. you can untap him, block, and then tap to destroy an equipment. So we're putting lipstick on a pig here. because the, the, So the untap ability is really cool, but there's other cards that abuse this much, much better than he does. Yeah, and, and, you know, we're kind of looking for spots where, and, you know, you might want a Demir-themed, you know, commander deck. And we're going to we're gonna discuss a Demir-themed Merfolk commander here in a little bit. Uh, there, there's just, you know, there's a few different things that you can do, a few different equipments and, and 
th- there are ways to use this. He yeah, I mean, he, he's not getting played in any format anytime soon. Uh, maybe a little bit in Commander. Um, but besides that... But oh, he's, you he's, know what would be really good? Huh. Dragon Throne of Tarkir. It's, oh. a, it's a legendary artifact equipment for four. Equipped creature has Defender and two and a tap. Other creatures you control gain Trample and get plus X plus X until end of turn where X is this creature's power. That would be pretty neat. So you get to you can undo you can undo it and do it again. I mean it's still expensive, but I'm I'm just I'm kind of trying to figure out something that yeah. I, and that's the thing, and that's why the un, so here people out there in cyberspace don't play this card, but find better cards with the untap ability and abuse them because they're so much fun. And they're so unique too. I mean, there, mm-hmm. there was only that block that had the untap mechanic. Yeah, and. We can honestly be thankful for Lorwyn because it's it's kind of the set that kind of brought around this the new world order, you know that that brought around simplification of cards at common, and really fixed a lot of things because magic, you know, there are some people that really like the complexities of magic, but it wouldn't be, I don't think it'd be around still if magic kept getting more and more complicated. No. I- and a lot of people talk about it. There's the power creep that happens in, um, I think, Yu-Gi-Oh! and a few of the other TCGs that are out there. And there's a lot of constant bannings. And the, the fact of the matter is that a lot of the old cards from the old sets are become unplayable. Now, side note, I've never actually played Yu-Gi-Oh! or Pokemon or anything like that. So I might just be talking out of my ass. But I read that somewhere, in a book, or online, and everything on the internet is true. I, I play a little bit of Pokemon uh, online, the the Pokemon trading card game online, and it's nuts. It like I have four Wheel of Fortune or Wheel of Fortunes in my deck, like, and the downside is I can only do it once a turn. <laughs> like it, that's a downside, and it it's basically just like both sides seeing who can one shot their their opponent's creature first. Yeah, I mean, so, so from what I've heard, it just. The power level on that stuff just gets too high where the old cards become useless. Or in Magic, the old cards are the most powerful in the game, and they've had to scale down from there. But right. this is not a Pokemon podcast. Yeah, this is a folk podcast. So we either need to start talking about Squirtles or talking about fish. Well, Squirtles kind of is as close to uh, the the Pokemon Merfolk as we get. So Maybe a Magikarp? Uh, yeah, probably Magikarp is probably the closest, but Squirtle is, is right up there, I think. So, basically, what we've done is we've looked at uh, we've looked at the the list of legendary commanders uh, that are Merfolk, and we we've each picked five. We we kind of drafted them amongst ourselves, and we rearranged. So first of all, everybody who listened to our podcast before knows that Cody knows nothing about sports. So I did have to explain to him what a how a draft works like this. I've I've drafted Magic the Gathering before. I know. Yes, but when I mentioned that, you said, "How are you going to pass the cards to me when we are just looking at them on a website?" Funny, Matt. Funny. <laughs> it's hilarious. So uh, we we each picked we each picked five. There were fourteen legendary command or legendary merfolk that are able to be commanders so we picked five and we had four that uh, just I, I mean they're not bad they're just they're, yeah, they're some, very, are bad. some are bad but i mean they're they're unique and you would have to uh, they, they don't necessarily spell out a very direct line of play but i would be so uh uh i would like to see somebody come to come to play with one of these decks and have like a really good version to play with these so the, the first one that was not drafted by either of us was ambassador Lanquis. now he's one that i seriously considered taking in my fourth and fifth picks ambassador Lanquis, for those who don't know he was pretty he's been printed twice he was in uh 10th edition he was also in torment Uh, Different art in both times, so if you want to play Ambassador Lanquist, you get actually customized the way you want to do it. But he's a two blue and one, and then he has – he's a one three, and his ability is three and a colon. Target player puts the top three cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. So he's the millfish. The reason I didn't take him is he is completely linear, one-dimensional. 
you're going to play all the uh, mono blue and artifact cards to give yourself infinite mana, and you're going to mill your opponents out. That's the strategy. And, and, it's, and that's, not a bad, that's not a bad way to go, but it, it's not like something that you would dedicate you know a, a competitive level deck for right no not at all well especially the problem is he's mono blue so your mono blue does not have the best tutors in the world so if you're going to play a very linear this is my win con strategy you need to have a uh, black to get the better tutors um you need to have a little bit more protection for him so again he's just he's got a neat ability um but you're, you're not going to build a mill deck around him he is the mill card in it so you you got to figure out a way to get infinite mana, which in blue and artifacts, there's a million ways to do that. But again, very linear. And at the end of the day, just not worth it. The other downside that he kind of has is his ability only targets one player at a time. So if you're going to build this deck, you need to be able to go infinite to, to really win a game of Commander, right? I mean, if we're, we're assuming a four-player oh, yeah, table. No, no. If, if you're not going infinite with him, you're losing. If you, if you don't have an infinite mana combo with him, you're, I mean, there, there's you can't play him. Yeah, and so even, even a big mana deck isn't good enough because again, three cards for, I mean, because if you're playing a four man pod, I mean, hundred card decks, I mean, you're you're talking about trying to mill three hundred cards. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, so you you need a way to go infinite, and that's not always a cheap proposition. So you're really putting a lot of mana into a commander that's kind of suboptimal. Which, if that's what you're into, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dog you on that, but that's something you need to take into consideration. Yep. So he he, he did not make the cut. Next up in our list is Jory N. Ruin Diver. He's a previous uh, random Merfolk of the week. Um, he's one blue red for a legendary creature, Merfolk Wizard. He's a two three, and whenever you cast your second spell each turn, draw a card. Again, I don't want to hit this too hard because we've talked about him a lot during the random Merfolk. Um, he's one of those guys that just he just just is too bad. The, play, playing all those spells just to draw a card, so you're you're burning a card to draw a card essentially, and an EDH eventually you're going to hit a land pocket or something along those lines, and that means you're playing a lot of cantrips which aren't really feeding your deck too much. So unless you're trying to play. I mean, the only way I can see this work is you're trying to build a EDH storm deck, but I don't even see that happening. Yeah, and, and he, I mean, we have Mizzix. We have Mizzix if you're going to do EDH storm, which is yeah. better. Um, his draw is conditional, or her draw is conditional, and red. It's like, it's a her? I think it's a her. Are, are those Merfolk boobs? Those look like Merfolk boobs. Huh. I, I think know. it's a her. I just I thought it was a. I thought it just worked out a lot, but maybe those are boobs. Tell us on Twitter. <laughs> do you think do you think that we are uh we're wrong in saying that that's a merfolk boob or not and merman <laughs> merman um and the the other thing is like let's be honest here blue is a, is a main color right yeah and red is kind of not bad but it's it's a very specific support color so if you're going blue red, like you need a reason to be in red. Yeah, I mean you're not gonna be casting lightning bolt just to draw a second card. And as as we yeah as we said, you only have blue. I mean there's only one other blue red merfolk ever in the history of Magic. So it's not like you're splashing Who is my red. Card? What's that? Who is my favorite card? Well, we're not we're not yeah that's yeah but we're not we're not splash we're not playing blue red for the red merfolk. Like we're playing blue for the merfolk and then red for the support spells, and if the if the support spells aren't there, then what are we doing? Yep. So moving on, he, that's why he's not being played. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I would love to sit down across from a Dorian Ruin Diver player because they probably have a crazy deck that's doing oh, something absolutely. dumb. Um. So next uh, is actually a recent addition. It's Kopala Warden of Waves. It's one blue blue for a legendary creature, Merfolk Wizard. He's a 2-2. Spells your opponent's cast that target a Merfolk you control cost two more to cast. Abilities your opponents activate that target a Merfolk you control cost two more to activate. I was shocked he didn't get drafted. Well, so here's the reason I didn't draft him. And and the thing is, is that, I mean, Merfolk creatures are good. 
and and pretty much any tribe in magic if you build an edh deck around them like you you just want to flood the board so but the thing is in in commander people aren't running single target removal for targets that are kind of mediocre by themselves and i'm not saying that all merfolk are mediocre by themselves but they're kind of just like any other tribe they're kind of dependent on each other to be good so getting the, one the two mana does not hit a board wipe it doesn't stop a board wipe and so like in a, in a in a competitive you know a, i mean not even really competitive like just a good solidly built edh deck you're not going to be running 20 single target removal you're going to be maybe running five yeah so like the, just targeting targeting one or two merfolk and making it cost two more is not that big of a deal in commander like if somebody wants to remove a merfolk that badly they'll pay two more you want to know why i didn't draft him why didn't you draft him because we did our draft while i was at work and i was supposed to be doing stuff so i pulled up my app that looked up all legendary merfolk and didn't realize that my app hadn't updated to put the Ixalan cards in there, and I forgot it. <laughs> you forgot that he was a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> because when we finished up and you said there were three Mer or four Merfolk that weren't drafted, I'm like, I'm only counting three. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, we have one more, and actually it's another uh, BFZ block one. Uh, Matt, do you have that one pulled up? I will here in a second. Yep, it is No Yandar royal shaper he is a legendary merfolk ally and he is one blue one white and three for a four four whenever you cast an instant or sorcery you may put three one one counters on target land you control if you do that land becomes a zero zero elemental creature with haste that's still a land so the reason why I would actually put him as my worst merfolk for commander is in commander, we play a lot of board wipes. When lands become creatures, they get hit by board wipes. That and is correct. You and So, I mean, I, I would never use his ability. So, essentially, he's a Azorius 4-4 four, for four, 5 vanilla creature for me. So, I, I actually have a card that would slot very perfectly into a Noyan Dar deck. It's Teferi's response. It's one in a blue for an instant. It says counter target spell or ability and opponent controls that targets a land you control. If a permanent's ability is countered this way, destroy that permanent, draw two cards. So it's it it counters single target removal on your land, and you draw two cards for two mana. Okay, so long story short, one of my personal EDH decks I play is I play uh, Child of Valara. But it's actually a lands deck, so it plays about 65 to 75 lands, depending on how I'm playing it that night. And that card is in there. I think I've cast it once out of probably 50 games I've ever played. So it's one of the, it's a situational card. You're not tutoring for it, or very rarely are you tutoring for it. So it's just it's either in your hand or it's not. Well, I mean that's the case of every card in EDH, but. So the thing, the thing that I'm talking about with Noyan Dar is, like you said, you don't want to go wide with this. You don't want to, you don't want to animate a whole bunch of your lands and then have them board wiped, right? No, Cody, so, you don't, don't want to play him. <laughs> well, no, you just don't want to play him. But I'm saying, if you were to, you can t use that ability to keep targeting the same land. So you can have one land that's like a fifteen fifteen, and just protect it. Like that, that that's not un that's not unreasonable. Or you could also run, just run Merit Lage and just keep putting the counters on the land before it becomes Merit Lage. Right? Because when it flips, it becomes the 2020, but it also has all those. Actually, you're, you're, you're interpreting that wrong because I do play Turbo Depths and Legacy. Uh, what happens is you sacrifice the land and then oh. put a Merit Lage token into play. So oh. you would sacrifice the land with all Never the counters. Never mind. Womp, womp. Wah, wah. That, yeah so so we could just put like uh we we could put celestial colonnade just put the three three the counters Kirby, on it Kirby, and then stop trying to make this work okay well so let's so before we go any further we're going to talk briefly you know because we actually met playing commander we did 
And so, you know, we have very specific styles of commander. And we, we've kind of, we, we kind of touched on at least one of your decks. Um, so, so, I mean, like, like you. Yeah, I, I like playing um, goofy commander. I like playing commanders that really aren't seen that often. And even if you see them a little bit more, I like to put my own little flair on them. And that's not to say that my decks aren't good because they're very strong. Uh, Cause I have a budget to make my decks as strong as I want to. Um, for example, I, so I have three commander decks built right now. Um, I, I think me and Cody both at one point had like nine or 10 uh, life happened. Don't get to play as much anymore. And my card base just got too thinned out. So I kind of condensed to about three. But I, I have Child of Alara, which is my lands EDH deck. Uh, my primary win condition is um, Maze's End, which is just fantastic. And it happens actually quite a lot. And no one ever gets mad that they get Maze's End. They actually is more impressed. I, I remember I actually gave you a bunch of uh, foil gates. I remember you, you, you going around the game, the uh, Dragon's Lair going, do you have any foil gates? <laughs> it was pretty it's pretty great i mean honestly if you're gonna maze zen somebody you might as well foil maze zen somebody right absolutely absolutely so my other deck or my other deck that i play um on a more competitive basis is uh mangara i've talked about this a little bit he is a uh one one um white creature uh, uh he's one and three or one and two i believe i i probably should know this Anyway, um, he is tap he two white and one, and he is a uh, tap him and remove Mangara and target permanent from the game. So the way I play him is uh, I abuse the uh, trigger and exile everybody's permanents ex and except for mine and win the game that way. Uh, and it's, I also have a lot of money into that deck. I have moat. I have um, all my artifacts or masterpieces and a bunch of other stuff. That's just kind of my I'm better than you deck um, when people want to pull them out because uh, you, you you if you play commander enough you know that somebody's going to show up and they're going to be like I'm the big dog because I've never played against you guys before and they'll pull out something super unfun so I'll pull out that I'll prison up and run his day uh, but my last deck is actually my, my favorite deck and I play Chaos Norin if you I don't want to go into too much detail but if you've never played Chaos Norin you need to look it up it is the most fun deck I've ever played it's my favorite thing I've ever done in Magic it's it's mono red with Norn the Wary and uh, and impact tremors and perforos and confusion in the ranks is the all star of the deck. Yeah, so that's that's that. Yeah, I'm, so I'm I'm currently down to three decks as well. I'm I'm working on uh, taking apart one of them and and kind of constructing two decks out of it or, or brewing two decks out of the parts. So the crown jewel of my collection. Uh, is is a Jorkadine uh, Boros equipment deck. And I actually sold the majority of my non-playing collection to foil out that entire deck. And so it has masterpieces, expeditions, it's it's beautiful. And it basically it's, it's really nice. It's it's really beautiful and and I play that deck as much as I can. It it basically, you know, you play value creatures, um, you know, uh etch champion you play your uh, your worm coil engines and then you just like hand them swords and you swing them in and it's a fun deck to play it, it just you might as well just turn the table sideways because that's all my deck is doing it's always attacking um my next favorite deck that i've been playing for for a little bit uh and actually matt helped helped me build this deck a little bit was uh i'm playing a mono green control deck because my favorite thing to do... Because when you hear mono green, you think control immediately. Well, so my, one of my favorite things to do, besides Boros, because outside of Merfolk, my favorite archetype is Boros. I like playing red-white. I identify very firmly with that color pairing, just kind of like having, you know, being able to maintain order, but also like being able to kind of like play within that order. You know, it's like it's like... I'm not against people smoking weed, but I would never smoke weed because I'd be I'd be terrified that a policeman would knock at my door. So like it's kind of just like it's it's like that thing where like you want to play within the rules. You know, you're in the rules and you're doing what's right, 
but you kind of mess around in there a little bit and and you can kind of like lay the smack down if you have to uh, but my favorite my other favorite thing is color pie violations and so like i had a mono blue deck that was mono blue tokens that was my Stitcher Giralf deck so like i love i love color pie pie violations and my mono green control deck run runs 26 fogs and basically it makes it so that my opponents can't attack and then i play things like vorinclex and huge eldrazi and stop them from being able to do anything and i love that deck so much cody do me a favor um for anybody who's watching this deck is actually insanely creative I, Cody has done a phenomenal job on it. If you don't mind, will you post a link on our Twitter um, so people can look it up and just take a gander? It's you'll you'll never see anything else like this. Yeah, and that's that's honestly what I love about commanders is that oh, you can. Who's the commander? You didn't even mention it. Oh, it's a uh, Fraley's Lanowar's Fury. It's the uh, mono green planeswalker, and so basically it's it's a uh, make a mana dork for his for her plus ability. Um, it's naturalize for its minus two which is pretty baller uh <laughs> in commander that is what i do it that's what i use it for most often uh when i play uh Freilies, it's just I, I drop her and destroy somebody's artifact or enchantment um and then the bottom one is you draw cards equal to the number of green creatures you control which the deck i think runs maybe 18 creatures but oftentimes drawing five or six cards is more than enough. And especially if you've been ticking her up to make Llanowar Elves to tap to help, you know, ramp you. And you, you just have lots of green creatures and nobody cares about removing your 1-1s one unless well, they board also, wipe. Commander's also not about winning all the time either. Commander's about shenanigans. Oh, and I just, I love how long it draws out games. It makes people so mad. That they that the, a game against a mono green deck took three hours. It's so great. Well, well, I know you have one more deck to go again to, to talk about, but one of my favorite games that I played was with me, you, and one other person. Um, I, I don't know if you'll remember this, but he was playing this completely broken posh deck, prosh deck, and I played a uh, prison deck. Um, and the entire time he was getting pissed off because every time he tried to combo, I would screw up his combo with some sort of prison effect. And I'd just be like, I'm just trying to make you play magic, brah. I'm just trying to make you play magic. I'm just trying to make you have a little bit of fun. Yeah, that's that's always the fun part about Commander is, you know, when you're playing in a group, you have that, that dynamic of playing against other people, you know, multiple people. And so, like, you could be just trying to do what you're trying to do. And if you get too into it, you can get frustrated because, or you can frustrate other people because they're so into what they're doing that they're 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 not worried about the other players, and that's when you can mess them up. So, uh, what was your last deck? My last deck right now is I call I affectionately call it Suck Squeeze Bang Blow, and <laughs> it's the <laughs> it's Caneos and Tira of Miletus. It's red, green, white, blue. Uh, that's the 2-8 that, um, at the beginning of your end step, draw a card. Each player may put a land from his or her hand onto the battlefield. Then each opponent who didn't draws a card. So the, the purpose for this deck is it plays... Th so this is also secretly a Boros deck. Because <laughs> it's a Boros deck with ramp. So what it does is it plays a lot of prison effects, so ghostly prison and propaganda style effects that tax people attacking me but then it plays a lot of things that force people to attack so like Famico the low blood which is two red red for a three two and Famico the low blood has bushido x where x is the number of attacking creatures and creatures your opponents control attack each turn of fable so it for it it's it's looking to price my opponents out of attacking me and forcing them to attack each other and then it plays fun things like Edric, which encourages my opponents to attack each other. Um, things like Gaji, the Honored One, which pumps my all attacking creatures. So if they're attacking my opponents, they're they're uh, attacking each other for, for higher damage. And then it also runs things like Furnace of Wrath, that is double damage. So it's it's like it's a make the world burn deck. 
So as you guys can tell, Cody and I do not take Commander that seriously. It, it is a fun format. It was always built to be a fun format, and we have fun with it. Yeah, so so we're gonna we're gonna talk about our top five, and we kind of reordered these a little bit to talk about similar cards together, and we're gonna discuss maybe one or two cards in the deck that kind of synergize with the the commander that we're discussing, but you know ultimately you know we want you you know you pick something that works for you, and and something that suits your play style. But we're you know we're a Merfolk podcast, so we're gonna discuss the Merfolk commanders. And note, I have never built a commander deck with any of these cards before. <laughs> well, I'm sure you've used some of the cards that you're going to talk about. Correct. Just not so, the commanders. On just straight out the gate. Um, so every one of these decks has a little bit of blue in it. So we're, there are certain cards we're just not going to bring up, and we assume you know they're going to be in there. Soul Ring is going to be in every single deck. Uh, Ristic Study is going to be in every single deck. Cyclonic Rift is going to be in every single deck. So, uh, and a few others. They're going to be just mono blue staples. You know they're going to be in there. So, we're not going to bring that stuff up because, I mean, you know what it is. It's going to be boring. So, yeah. we're going to talk about more fun stuff. And most most of the merfolk are honestly mono blue. So, the, most most of these cre- most merfolk creatures can fit in any of these decks. So, we're not worried about that. So, we're going to dip, dip into number five, which we we kind of synced up to be the two sigs. So I picked Sig River Cutthroat as my number five. He's Demir Demir for a legendary creature, Merfolk Rogue. He's a one three. And at the beginning of your turn, if an opponent lost three or more life this turn, you may draw a card. So kind of what you want to do with this, I think, is have lots of unblockable creatures. And um, I mean, there's not a lot of Anthem effects in blue, but there's lots of ways to make things unblockable. So there's lots of ways to kind of sneak in a lot of damage, um, and and also kind of take advantage of that. I've got a, I've got two cards here that I pulled up that I think would be really cool in a Sig deck. Um, the first is a counterspell. It's called Undermine, and it's blue blue black for an instant. Counter target spell. Its control loses three life, and that's conveniently enough to help you draw a card each turn, or to draw a card the the turn that you play it at least. Um, and and one other card because you're gonna be you're gonna want to draw a lot of cards and you're gonna have lots of unblockable things or ways to make things unblockable is coastal piracy. It's two blue blue for an enchantment. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to an opponent, you may draw a card. Alrighty, so my pick was the other Sig, and it was my number five pick, Sig River Guide. Now. So I assumed, so when I was drafting, I was never, I'm not a Merfolk person, you guys know this. So I was never intending to make Merfolk decks. And I really thought this was going to be my tribal Merfolk go in for it deck. It is not. (laughs) So Sig is a one white, one blue island walk. And he's a 2-2. And he has the ability of tap one white and one of anything, colon, Target Merfolk you control gains protection from the color of your choice until the end of turn. So I initially thought, yeah, we're going to go tribal, we're blah, blah, blah. No, we're not going wide with Sig. What we're doing, we're Voltroning. We, so the two cards that I think make the most sense for Stig are Grafted Exoskeleton and Batter Skull. We are going to drop the biggest, most broken things on the board. We are going to pump up. We are going to play Merfolk. But we're not we're not trying to go wide. We're just going to try to make one or two merfolk super big. We're going to give them protection. We're going to turn their lands into islands. We're going to go through and hopefully put it on sig and it's given with commander damage. Yeah. And so I, so giving giving you have the option to basically protect yourself from your opponent's deck. Ex- exactly. They, so can, they, they can't, can't block they can't hit your creatures and they can't uh, block. Absolutely. So barring artifact creatures, they're they're done for. Absolutely. Um, and, and one thing that I will say, too, is that um, Sig is the only other white-blue legend except for the crappy land, one that we would never play. So it opens you up to a lot of really cool EDH cards from Merfolk that you wouldn't normally get, like Swords to Plowshares, Enlightened Tutor, um, Steel Shaper's Gift, Return to Dust, Stoneforge Mystic. So it really opens you up to a whole different playing field. 
So you're saying you could play Swordfish in EDH? You, we would be playing Swordfish, yes. <laughs> and so, so, and I mean, just like every other EDH player, I do go to EDH Rec first to kind of get an idea. And one thing that EDH, EDH Rec is doing for um, the Voltron Sig decks is they're playing a Helm of Keldra, Sword of Keldra, Shield of Keldra, and trying to build a Keldra. And I have nothing but respect for that. Oh, I, I would be totally down to see that. I, if, if somebody, yeah, I, especially if somebody naturaled it, I mean, even if they tutor, like, because most, you know, enlight, uh, Enlightened Tutor and, or sorry, not Enlightened Tutor, it would be um, uh, Steel Shaper's Gift and Open the Armory and things no, like that. No, Enlightened Tutor would work as well. Oh, Enlightened, yeah, yeah, that does get an, an artifact. So, like, I, I still, because, I mean, you have to draw the tutors. So it's like you're basically you basically have six chances out of a out of a hundred to to draw Keldra and then play them and not have them destroyed. <laughs> like I would be totally fine with that. So two things I've never seen in Magic that I want to see one day is I've never seen Keldra assembled, and I've never seen one of those uh, giant two cards that equal one card from um, Eldritch Moon happen. So th those are two oh, things I hope meld. to see in one day. The, yeah, the, the melts. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so we're going to move on to number four real quick. Uh, I picked Talrand Sky Summoner. Talrand is a two blue blue for a merfolk wizard. He's a two two. And whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a two two blue drake creature token with flying onto the battlefield. Now, to be honest, this is not the tribal merfolk commander you've been looking for. But this is a great commander for a for a spell slinging deck or a mono blue spell slinging deck i should say so with this deck you're kind of looking for things that help that either benefit from you casting spells or help you cast spells cheaper or do stuff when you cast spells so i i have a couple cards here i have jace's sanctum which is an enchantment for three and a blue for magic origins and uh, it says instants and sorcery spells you cast cost one less one generic less to cast and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell scry one so this kind of turns him into you cast an instant or sorcery for one less you make it to two and you scry one so that's pretty darn good um the next one also is an enchantment uh it's it's kind of a recent inclusion from kaladesh metallurgic summonings summonings metallurgic summonings three blue blue for an enchantment whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell create an xx colorless construct artifact creature token where x is that spell's converted mana cost so you're making double tokens you're making a 2-2 two -two and then an xx artifact um, and it also has three blue blue xl metallurgic summonings return all instant and sorcery cards from your graveyard to your hand activate this ability only if you control six or more artifacts so in commander we can get the six or more artifacts with rocks and and you know just making the tokens off of this plus then you can basically just pass in flames all of your instances of sorceries back to your hand that's dumb that's christmas land <laughs> that's the merfolk you've been looking for yeah if, if you're if you're looking to sling spells talrand is the guy for you uh what do you have for your number four matt number four was Vorel of the Hall Clade. So, Vorel was my Trent Richardson pick. So, for all my football fans out there, we thought Trent Richardson was going to be an all-star. We, we, we thought he'd be hitting home runs left and right. We thought he's going to be a member of our team for years to come. Alley-oop. And then he got on the team, and then we realized he's a piece of shit. Penalty goal. <laughs> he got penalty goals left and right. So, okay. So, Vorel is one... And Simic, so green blue for a one four. And he has the ability, which is one green and tap for each counter on Sorry, no, no, I have to correct you. It's green blue tap. I'm sorry, green blue tap for each creature or for each. Yeah, you screwed me up, dude. You screwed me up. I had to for correct each... you. <laughs> Slightly prepared and a little drunk. Green blue. Tap for each counter on target artifact creature or land. Put another of those counters on that permanent. So, I thought that he was going to be some awesome counter 
commander that I could just abuse and blah, blah, blah. I should just remember Dragon's Maze. It's just Dragon's Maze. So every time I was trying to think of something that he could do that was awesome, all I could think of was Atraxa does that better. And I'm like, oh, he could do this. Atraxa does it better. So <laughs> he is Atraxa's younger, more unsuccessful brother. But if you do choose to play him, what I would suggest doing is playing all the cards that make Atraxa good. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm actually holding up a full rail of the whole clade right now because um, I actually had a draft at my house where we did triple Dragon's Maze. It was a, it was a triple Dragon's Maze backdraft, and uh, somebody drafted Vorel of the whole clade, and uh, it did about as good as you expected it would. I, I, yeah, I mean, play Deep Glow Scape, play Inexorable Tide, um, just, just play Atraxa, she's better. Yeah. I, I mean, unless you want to play a Goofy Commander, I, I mean, as we say all the time, if you want to play the Goofy Commander that's not very good, play the Goofy Commander that's not very good and have fun. But if you want, if you want to do decent, don't play him. Yeah, we're we're not we're not going to say that it's optimal, but obviously in commander you do things that aren't optimal. Um, so we're gonna speed things up here a little bit, and we're gonna actually talk about two that are kind of similar. So my number four pick and his number four pick are kind of the inverse of each other. They're um, number three picks. Yeah, sorry, number three pick. Um, so mine was Tashana, Voice of Thunder. It's five green blue for a Merfolk Shaman. That's a star star. And uh, his power, her power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your hand. You have no maximum hand size. And when Tashana enters the battlefield, you draw a card for each creature you control. So we want lots of tokens. So I picked two cards that kind of make a lot of tokens. The first one is Rite of Replication, which is kind of a staple, but I thought I'd put it in here anyway. It's two blue blue. You put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of target creature, but it has kicker five. And if kick, if right of replication was kicked, you put five of those tokens onto the battlefield instead. So that that immediately puts, you know, five things. So when we when we cast Tashana, we're gonna draw lots of cards, and it's it's gonna be great. Um, the next is Progenitor Mimic, which is four green blue for a shapeshifter, and you may have Progenitor Mimic enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it gains at the beginning of your upkeep. If this creature is, isn't a token, create a token that's a copy of this creature. And that actually has a very fun synergy with Aetherling, which was also in Dragon's Maze. So, mine was Prime Speaker Zingana. She is two green, green, blue, blue for a 1 1. When Prime Speaker Zingana enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it, where X is the greatest power among other creatures you control. When Prime Speakers in Ghana enters a battlefield, draw cards equal to its power. So I also picked Progenitor Mimic as one of my two cards. Um, I'm not going to go over it again, but yeah, so it comes into play and you make it a copy of her. Uh, you draw a ton of cards and just have fun. Or if you have another giant green beater on the battlefield, you just have another copy of that and then you just go to town. But the, the real engine for her, um, and probably for yours as well, was Dead Eye Navigator. Um, Dead Eye Navigator is, everybody who plays EDH knows it. It probably should be banned in EDH because it's so damn broken, but it's not, so I'm going to keep abusing it. It's a 2 blue and 4 for a 5-5, five, five, but it's soulbound, which is when you pair this card with another creature, uh, both these creatures... I uh, have the same ability, which is as long as Divine Navigator is paired with another creature, each of those creatures has tap one blue and one, exile this creature and return to the battlefield under your control. So essentially you abuse her, enter the battlefield trigger, you draw a million cards and just have fun while your opponents cry. And even if you copy her as that big of a creature, you just sack the copy and you draw a bunch of cards. So it, yep. it, there's no downside. No, no, she, she's just fantastic. So more often than not, though, you're not going to be playing her as a commander. You're going to be using her as part of a Simic or somewhat of a green-blue X build. But, I mean, as a commander, it's still fantastic. And like I said, they're, they're basically kind of, they're, they're kind of similar to each other in that, you know, with, with uh, Prime Speaker, you want big creatures to draw lots of cards. And with Tashana, you want 
lots of small creatures to draw lots of cards. So that's what kind of why we paired, paired them together. Yep. Uh, my number three is Thada number- Adele. A qu- sorry, number two. I'm going to mess that up all night. Um, so my number two is Thada Adele Acquisitor. It's one blue blue for a 2-2 merfolk rogue. Which, by the way, I was super sad that you got her. I thought I was going to sneak her in for pick three or four, and then you just stole her right from me. Yeah, I was like, I'm not messing around. I love Thada Adele so much. I, I've used it in a lot of blue decks. Um, it, she has, he or she, it, it, that's a she. She's wearing a bikini. Merman! Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that that merman so much. <laughs> merman! Uh, she has Island Walk. And whenever Thada Adele Acquisitor deals combat damage to a player, you search that player's library for an artifact card and exile it. Then that player shuffles his or her library until end of turn, you may play that card. So I've picked some cards for this deck, and obviously you could probably play these in any Merfolk deck. But the first one I picked is Quicksilver Fountain. It's an artifact for three from Mirrodin. And at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player puts a flood counter on target non-island land he or she controls. That land is an island as long as it has a flood counter on it. At end of turn, if all lands in play are islands, remove all flood counters from them. So, what this does is you are a mono blue deck. You do not care that your non-island lands are turned into islands as long as you have island walk so it makes your opponents uh, turn their non-islands into islands so you have island walk and basically you can keep stealing stuff from them and playing them which is great the next card i picked was knowledge exploitation it's five blue blue for a tribal sorcery rogue and uh, this sorcery has prowl for three and a blue and you may play this card for its prowl cost if you dealt combat damage to a player this turn with a rogue, which, luckily enough, our commander is a rogue. You search target opponent's library for an instant or sorcery card. You may play that card without paying its mana cost. And then that player shuffles his or her library. So think about this. You swing. You have Quicksilver Fountain. Your opponent has made an island for you to conveniently island walk over. You deal the combat damage. You search their library for an for an artifact. You pull it out, and then you search their library for an instant or sorcery, and then play that for free because you can play it with its prowl cost. How baller is that? It seems good. I kind of want to make a Thada Adele deck now. It seems pretty good. <laughs> seems good. What's your number two? My number two, which I I I I. Sh- I... Got her in at number two because I did not want to screw her around. I wanted to make sure I got her. Uh, she is one of the oldest. If I think she is the oldest uh, Merfolk commander. And it's Empress Galena. She is two blue and three for a one three. And her ability is blue, blue, and tap. Gain control of target legend or legendary permanent. So EDH rec, I'm going rogue on. Because all the strategies in EDH rec, I don't think use her correctly. She is a prison control commander all day. If Mono I ever blue. saw one. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So essentially, about 50 plus percent of the commandy, commander, commandy, commander decks you're going to play against are going to be commander-centric. So you play her, and you completely turn off their commanders. They want to pros you? Eh, they're not going to get... They're, they're not going to be able to abuse those triggers. Um... They want to attract to you? Nah, that's not going to happen. So she's just fantastic. She is, and and that's just those are just commanders. We're we're, we're in a format that a lot of legendary permanents are being played. Um, are you going to play a Gaius Cradle? I think I'll take that. It's just it's it's just Value Town USA. So what I'm going to do with her is I'm going to play a newer card called As Foretold. It is one blue and two. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a time counter on as foretold. For each turn, you may pay zero rather than pay the mana cost for a spell, as long as you the mana cost is X or less, which is equal to the time counters. And one thing, and again, I'm, I mean, it's a newer card, so I'm sure you guys all know this. You can play it on your turn and their turn, as long as it's an instant. So you get to use it, or multiple turns, if you have multiple people in the game. So why am I playing as foretold? You might ask, because this is a prison 
make your opponents hate life deck. I am going to be playing Back to Basics, which is one blue, two enchantment. Non-basic lands, don't untap during the controls, untap phases. So, guess what? This is EDH. How many basic lands are really being played? Not many. And I'm playing all basic islands. So, I'm going to get to play Magic. You're not. But I'm also going to be playing Stasis. And if you guys do know what Stasis is, you realize that it is probably one of the most hated cards ever printed. It's pretty amazing. I'm 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 kind of jealous that you got to pick this one. <laughs> so essentially stasis is one blue and one, and we do not no longer have an untap phase. But what occurs is it has community upkeep one blue. So I turn off the game, but I have as foretold. So I get to keep playing Magic, and you don't. And eventually, I just win. That's pretty good. You just lock people out, they can't play their commanders, and they can't play Magic. Yep. And Stasis has some of the best art in Magic history. I don't care what anybody else says. So, moving on to our number one picks. Uh, my Literally, I mean, Matt, you got to pick first. And you picked, I, you were very enthusiastic about your pick. I was. I, I picked what I honestly think is the strongest Merfolk commander. You obviously disagree, but. Oh, 100%. 100%. So, the, so I picked mine, and, and I'll discuss it here real quick. I honestly think it's the strongest Merfolk commander because of its utility. So, mine is Kumena Tyrant of Araska. And that's not just because it's recent. It's because I honestly think that it does the most for Merfolk. It's one green blue for a 2-4 Merfolk Shaman. And it has tap another untapped Merfolk you control. Kumena, Tyrant of Arazka, can be block can't be blocked this turn. Tap 3, untapped Merfolk you control. Draw a card. Tap 5, untapped Merfolk you control. Put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on each Merfolk you control. So basically what this does is it, it works in three ways. Number one, you can do Voltron with Kumena. So you can just like make a bunch of drop a bunch of Merfolk and shapeshifters and make Kumena unblockable and just like drop a bunch of swords on him. You can use it in a control build where you tap Merfolk at the beginning of your opponent your last opponent's untap step and draw cards. Or you can pump the whole team. Just tap five Merfolk and put a plus one plus one counter on every Merfolk you control. And it's cheap. Three mana is incredible. You can get this thing out early and get some damage in. You can play it late and, and be totally fine because you're in blue and green. So you're ramping and drawing cards. And I just think it would be really cool to have as a commander. That was cute. I remember my first beer. Now, if you want to talk about a big boy commander, this is not necessarily so. Th this is hands down the best Merfolk commander ever printed. No, the, the, the jury is back. The sentence has been confirmed. It, it is what it is. He is not only the probably the most, he is hands down the most powerful Merfolk commander. He is one of the most powerful commanders, period. This is Thrasios, Triton Hero. So. Thrasios is one blue, one green for a one three. His ability is four colon scry one. Then reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it in onto the battlefield tapped. Otherwise, draw a card. The biggest thing is he has the ability partner, which, if you remember correctly, you can tap. You can have a second commander if they both have the partner ability. So, everything that a Bastard Lanquist was not, Thrasios is. So, what we're going to do with Thrasios is, we're going to make it a four-color commander deck. We don't... Green, blue, pick your other two, two colors. It doesn't matter. It, one, one's most likely going to be black. You're going to get infinite mana. And you're going to get it very quickly. And you're going to draw your entire deck. You're going to put every land you ever had into play and you're going to win immediately. He costs two mana to play. You're, you're, I mean, 
let's just let's just make this easy. You're gonna you're gonna turn one, play a mana rock. Uh, turn two, you're gonna um, tutor out uh, th- one of your uh, combo pieces to make infinite mana. I mean, you're 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 winning by turn three, four, five with this deck. Um, Basalt Monolith, Rings of Brightheart, Thrasios, game over. He he he's not he's not a fun commander. Let's just put it that way. He's absolutely not fun, but he wins games, and he's gonna consistently win games because you get into the four colors, and you're going to be able to tutor out whatever you want. Now he's not gonna be a cheap deck either because you're gonna need to play duels, you're gonna need to play fetches, you're gonna need to get all the good tutors, but he is just. He is the boss. He is the motherfucking boss. Okay. Well, uh, that, that that's a pretty that's pretty high praise for for our number one uh, commanders each. Do you have any cards that you think you'd like to burn with them? Uh, yeah. I mean, basalt monolith <laughs> and uh, rings of Brightheart. Uh, but I mean, it it just. I mean, Demonic Tutor, uh, Vampiric Tutor, Imperial Seal. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, like you said, you can pair any, any partner with him and, and basically just have whatever you want. You can, it's, it's, you can have your cake and eat it, too. It's the versatility. You, 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 so essentially, you, you build a four-color deck of the best cards ever printed, and then you just make sure you get to draw your entire deck and just win. That sounds like a good deck. So we'll leave it up to our listeners to see who picked the better merfolk commanders between the two of us and i mean you know this this could open us up to you know people that wouldn't normally have listened to our podcast just by playing commander it's it's a fun topic and i love discussing commanders you know we like you said we both play commander a lot and we love playing commander so discussing decks is 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 hella fun so one of the things I think we should do, and I'm spurning on Cody right now, so this is this is live radio, is if we get enough followers, and again, it's, I'm not trying to force us to get followers, but if we get enough followers in the future that we can actually get a poll going, maybe we'll get like a poll of the top four commanders and let our followers pick for me and Cody to pick a different commander, Merfolk commander, then we can play each other best out of three, and we can report back on what happened, or even record it for on Moto. I will download Moto for that. <laughs> that would that would definitely be a lot of fun to play some head to head commander and actually I'm I'm brewing a, a Merfolk commander deck that's actually piloted by Deravy, but don't tell the Merfolk. And <laughs> it just just so I have access to the white Merfolk and the green and the blue. Um so I I mean that's pretty much the show, wouldn't you say, Matt? I, I have nothing else to talk about. All right, so if you want to reach out and talk to us, you can contact us on Twitter. We're on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as at FishCastMTG. Uh, my personal Twitter is at NotCodySmith, and Matt's Twitter is? It's at MatthewCaudill8. By the way, I want to thank the three people that followed me. I am the old man who doesn't necessarily use Twitter that much, so I appreciate the three new followers. I almost have as many real followers as I do Russian troll porn bots. But as soon as I get more real people than Russian troll porn bots, I'm going to tweet it out and we'll have some fun. <laughs> so, to get back to the Russian troll bots, um, if, you have a, if you have a longer question or want to discuss like a show topic or anything like that, feel free to contact us at fishcastmtg at gmail.com. Our cover art was made by Tessa and Hunter Pruitt. Thank you so much. Like I had no idea how to work Photoshop. I, my my idea was to just like look up in a logo of a, like a cartoon fish and then i kept pulling up things that were just mtg goldfish and i was like I, we we cannot be the same as them we just can't they're so much better than us oh no they're they're leagues ahead they're streets ahead if you're as cool as i am and they're, they're thrasios we're jorn l jorian rune diver yeah and if you really like what you're doing here, please rate and subscribe uh, to us on whatever device you, whatever podcast machine you use. Um, we're on the Apple and Google Play podcast app, as well as uh, whatever other app you can find us on. I'm sure we're there. Thank you very much for your time. We will see you next week. And I think we actually have some cool stuff happening next week, Matt. I, I, I've, I've heard that we do. It'll be fun. We'll see you next week. 
All right. Thanks, guys.